that was my experience by the way when i when i opened my own yoga school uh in finland uh nearly 20 years ago and um, then i put on my website that uh, part of the program i'll be teaching bhakti yoga as well but when i wrote that i didn't have any clear idea how i'm going to do that so it wasn't in the weekly schedule at the outset and then at one point i remember within the span of one week five five different people contacted me either by phone call or by writing email that when is this bhakti yoga going to start really? and then i figure out that i guess i need to start it now <laughs> <laughs> so then I started a weekly class where, where I was teaching people basic ideas of Bhagavad Gita and chanting and kirtan and uh, uh, and I've been doing it ever since. Uh, and I noticed that uh, people are really different. Some people are like really everything. They don't have any problem going to the temple and interacting uh, with the devotees and doing the full thing. Whereas others, they're very happy by doing their private practice. But then when they encounter uh, what you would call regular devotees, it seems like there's almost these two kinds of people don't understand one another. Almost like they are speaking a different language. Uh, Interesting. So, you know, you, yes. you are, you're highlighting a different point over here. Quite often, whenever I have also noticed that the challenge of outreach in the West is, is becoming increasingly evident because our demographics are in the West, especially in America, are becoming quite homogeneously Indian. Of, so, there is a matter of concern. But often the issue, is, issue of concern is said to be cultural that we present mm. ourselves as say Indian culture or Vedic culture or whatever word we use for it. Yeah. But so you are saying that apart from the cultural factors, there could be psychological factors with respect to individual, would you use the word values or orientation or nature, whatever you use. Yeah. So, so yes. those, so our presentation is geared for a particular kind of people. Yes. Uh so I was experiencing this firsthand when I was uh, doing my own uh, small scale outreach. I was noticing that there's something that uh, I don't have any problem personally interacting in both worlds because I've been doing it since day one. So I feel at home in the what you would call normal <laughs> contemporary yoga world. And I feel at home in the temple in environment, so I can interact with uh, both groups. But I, I can see that <laughs> it seems that sometimes says the, it, the, it just doesn't match. And uh, why is that? And I was wondering about that. And when I started doing my uh, PhD work, uh, uh, then I came across a possible explanation which is exactly uh, related to what you just said, that people's psychological profiles are just really different. And it's not that there's one wrong and one right profile, but they are just different. And <laughs> based on the profile, then one is attracted to different kind of uh, environment and presentation and how the spirituality manifests uh, in terms of setting and personal interactions and maybe institution or non-institutional and hierarchical or more equal and like that. So, you know, this brings us to a more fundamental question. That some, the way I was grew up in spirituality, in bhakti, it was almost like independence was considered to be a dirty word. In fact, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it is our desire for independence that has, has brought us to the material world. That is what will keep us in the material world. But then yeah. over time, I realized that in, it is Krishna who has given us free will. So the free will is not yeah. the problem. It is the, it is the misuse of the free will that is the problem. And each of us, if you have free will, we will also naturally use it according to our individuality. So then I learned yes. about the, even within devotee circle, I learned about the differentiation between autonomy and independence. If, if we want mm. to use words, which are say, because sometimes in a particular tradition, particular words get a negative connotation and once we yeah. start using those words then it becomes uh, it becomes disconcerting yeah so 
that a personal sense of autonomy is something which is required for every individual. And I've seen okay. also devotees yeah. that uh, if they are always depending on someone else for instructions about how to grow or what to do, mm. and if the, if their guide goes away or the guide is inaccessible, uh, and then they just feel completely lost. It's like the end of their spiritual life. So I also noticed that <laughs> like there can be unhealthy level of dependence also. So yes. So so you are saying, if I understand right, that uh, that for people who so there can be different people who require different levels of independence or different levels of autonomy, yes. if you want to use that word. And yes. okay. uh, our presentation is geared more towards people who who don't have a high a high need for autonomy. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's part of it. Because uh, when I read uh, Prabhupada's books and commentaries, so I come across both kinds of statements. There's a lot of emphasis on free will. I did my master's work about the wheel of time in the theology of uh, uh, Hare Krishna movement. And uh, the basic idea about wheel of time is that uh, time is all powerful and uh, <laughs> you, practically speaking, eternally rotate within the cycle of birth and death, whether it's on the individual level or then you can take societal level, societies go through uh, cycles, and then there's yuga cycles, cosmic cycles, Brahma's life, Mahavishnu is breathing in and out. So everything is like, it's mind blowing. <laughs> and uh, within that frame, uh, then when we consider how Srila Prabhupada presents uh, our position towards time, is what I found out is emphasizing very much both individual agency, one should really take charge of one's own spiritual evolution. And then also societal level, he's talking a lot about the need to do something positive to change the world towards the better, rather than just waiting for the yoga cycle to turn to the next. <laughs> and uh, then even the in the most largest <laughs> scale of cycle, the Brahma's day, we find is that Lord Brahma is taking birth as Haridas Thakura and making further <laughs> spiritual advancement, if you will. Uh, I hope I'm not offending Lord Brahma by saying this, uh, <laughs> but uh, arguably taking part in Mahaprabhu's pastimes is a very fortunate situation. Anyway, so... Uh, it came across in many places uh, that rather than just waiting for the time to take its course, Shri Prabhupada is emphasizing quite much uh, that we need to do something <laughs> about it, whether it's about our spiritual, personal spiritual advancement or uh, about changing the world. So uh, when I read it, I, I find both kinds of statements, and uh, but I think there might be something about it, at least when I started my uh, own ashram experience back then. At that time, uh, giving up one's uh, independent thinking was very much emphasized, like one should not speculate, one should just accept whatever the higher authority is uh, telling you to do, which then brings with it the problem, what if there are more than one authority giving contradictory mm -hmm. uh, instructions, and or what if the authority is giving an instruction which is not in accordance with Shastra, and this kind of thing, so it seems that one cannot really ever totally evade the responsibility of uh, using one's own uh, intellect. Uh, True. So, and, and even the cosmic cycle, you say that, see, I never thought of it from that perspective, that although it's Kali Yuga, it's age of degradation, but still we have Lord Chaitanya descending to this age. And he is, he's in one sense, providing us facility to counter the default trends of the age. So yeah. in that sense, even his very descent is a testimony to the, to the presence of human agency. So 
if there were no human agency then even the lord couldn't do anything if, if we didn't have <laughs> <laughs>